Warning, what you're about to see in this video might scare you. We all know how AI is getting spookingly good. The weirdest thing about this AI tool is that it is actually AI automating AI, or statistical models. It used to take data scientists a ton of code to write these algorithms, from getting your data source, to transforming it in Python and SQL, to preparing your training sets, and ultimately creating and evaluating a machine learning model for your business. And while I still think these skills will be useful to have, this can be completely automated for you and your business with today's tool. So what is this tool, you ask? It's called Pecan AI. It's an AI chatbot that you can talk to that will do all of the machine learning work for you. You just have to tell it what you want. That can connect to all of your existing data connectors, or you can simply upload CSVs like we'll do in this video. So with that being said, let me show you in just a few minutes just how awesome Pecan really is. It gets better as we get further into the video. Feel free to follow alongside me or just sit back and watch. Enjoy. So I'll assist you in formulating a predictive question. I'll then create an SQL notebook to build a training set. What would you like to predict? Well, I'll show you the data set later, but we're actually going to be predicting avocado prices over time. So I'd be happy to help you with your predictive use case. Let's start by defining a predictive question. We're actually going to do monthly. What is the prediction subject you are interested in? For our data set, we have two different types of avocados, just conventional as well as organic. In my opinion, they're exactly the same thing. Type of avocado. So conventional avocado versus organic. Okay, so it says perfect. What is the target value you want to predict for type of avocado that is going to be the price of the avocados okay so you want to predict the price for each type of avocado whether it's conventional versus organic though so is there a specific future time horizon that is relevant to the predicted price we'll just say over the next six months so that should work fine great so you want to predict the price of each type of avocado over the next six months would you like to predict this price on a recurring basis aka monthly or after some specific event this is actually really cool that it can look for specific events but uh, we're not going going to do that. We're just going to say recurring monthly. It thinks we want to predict monthly the expected price of each type of avocado in the next six months. Yes, that sounds right to me. Let's just say it looks good. Okay, so it says fantastic and it needs to review our data and they say they strictly adhere to data security compliance standards. Completely essential for this to be useful in business. So let's just say yes, let's continue with my data. So what it's going to do is search our tables that we've uploaded to see if it finds anything related. I uploaded this earlier. So what it found is my my table called in my files that's just where you upload stuff dot avocado and then it found a table that has all of this information so let me show you what the csv looks like and how we can download that so on kaggle i'm just using the avocado prices data set from justin kiggins appreciate it man okay so we have an id column we have the date which is an important timestamp. we're going to need that notice that it is weekly but the model or pcan is going to notice this is weekly data but we want it monthly it will recognize that and make important transformations we have the average price, which is our main target column. And then we have some other stuff that might be useful in predicting, like the total volume. We have some of these, which I have no idea what they are. We'll have to see what it actually does with those, whether it uses it or not. And we've got some other columns as well. And as you can see here, we actually have the type of avocados. It's either conventional. And if you scroll to the bottom, you're going to get some organic avocados as well. So if you're following along, Pecan wouldn't have noticed your data set because it didn't exist. It would have told you to upload that as a CSV. You can go ahead and do that there. And if you want it connected to any of your data sources, it has all of the awesome ones that anyone would use from Google, Microsoft, or Snowflake, you name it. So it should recognize all these columns. Most importantly, make sure that date is listed as a timestamp and that your target column is listed as a number. So it says to calculate the target value or the expected price, we need to identify the following columns. So the target value column is expected price. The entity ID column is the type of avocado and the date column. So based on the schema, it would be this, this, and that. Yes, that is all correct. So we'll just say yes there. Okay, so now it's at the stage where it understands everything. It has our question. It knows what we want to do. It knows our data set and it has all of those columns and we can just click generate notebook. Okay, so here's our notebook or what they're calling nutbook, which is a great name. Now, can we firstly just understand how insane this is? Like just a couple of years ago, I was teaching everyone how to make these yourself, typing everything by hand. Now, of course, that's still important. You need to go through that step to understand it. But here, here's where we are in the business. Like here's where it truly is. It will do this whole thing for you. It'll create the notebook, explain everything to you, give you all of the code, even output it like I always love to do is get a sample of everything. It's going to work towards getting your training set of information, labeling it so that you have it in the way that it can actually train. It's even going to separate it into train versus validation sets. And ultimately at the very end here, actually we see a little bit of an error. So let me actually just diagnose that. I asked it to diagnose the error 
and it's actually explaining why there's an error. It's some sort of column name. Yeah, I saw that. It was actually stupid how uh, the column name was 4046, which is a number. Uh, so it found that error and then it's actually able to fix that. So we can actually just copy it and then we can just control A, control V. We can then just kind of run that query again. And there you go. Now it's a success. So isn't that crazy? Like it was wrong, but then you just ask it to fix itself and then it fixes itself. It's so insane, bro. So that's it. We're now ready for PCAN to train the model. Let's review what we did. Yeah, yeah, we know what we did. So over here on the right, let's just press train model. You can see it has this little pop-up. It needs us to validate the data sets. Yep, that seems fine. And you could go ahead and verify that the data mapping is correct, but it definitely is. So let's just click on continue to model training. Now there's some really cool options here. You can actually do training mode fast versus production quality, 10 to 30 minutes or several hours. You know which one we're going to pick right now. There's an optimization metric, which we can't actually adjust unless you do pick the production grade one, but this automatic is definitely fine. And you can also pick the data split, which you can even mark by a particular day to split the data. That is absolutely insane because working with dates in programming is a nightmare. It is so annoying and that's where so much of the time is spent. They pop up a calendar so that you can just click the day. It's crazy stuff. So we're just going to leave it as automatic, but we're going to train that model. Okay, so it says your model will be ready soon and they'll send us an email once it's ready. So I'll just wait for that email. Okay, so I got the email. I popped that open to see how good is the model. This is our model evaluation step. So you can see it's actually really good. 4% average bias from actual values. We can look at that daily, weekly, or what we trained at, which is monthly. So that's really, really cool. It's very, very accurate there. So let's explore the model a little bit. So metrics analysis here, we can see again, it has 4% error bias is the main thing. We can look at mean absolute error, which is just a little bit higher. It actually gives you the formulas and explains these things, which is really, really cool. The whole point of this thing is to really understand all the stuff you're doing, and it's not just some black box. It's very open. Okay, we can look at some stuff like, say, the performance consistency. So if we have an overfit, the train and validation set R squared is 99.4. The test set R squared is 82. Now, it's fairly common for these advanced machine learning models to overfit a little bit. You can see that it is definitely having a bit of an overfitting problem. However, it's still really, really good. Like, this is time series data. It's very hard to predict stuff in the future. And so test set 82 is actually still pretty great. It says consistent model performance across training and test sets. That one, that's a bit of a stretch. Like, let's be honest, 99.4 on the train is clearly overfitting to it. And 81.8, there's a pretty obvious overfit issue to this. So I would have kind of rathered it said there's some overfitting there, but it is still pretty good. So I guess that's okay. Uh, attribute columns and feature performance. So you can see which columns are the most important. We should really figure out what the heck these columns even are. 4046 and 4770. Apparently they're very important. So we'll have to look at those later. Obviously the most important column in predicting the future is the value itself. So that's really, really cool that we have that. They could actually get you to explain that as well. And on the left here, you can actually pop this open to see all of the information here. So we can see it was training mode fast. It actually only took 15 minutes. The algorithm it decided to use was cat boost. So this is definitely automated machine learning. It figured out that that is the best one to use. Training and validation set was 89.2% and the test set was 10.8%. Okay, so if we're happy with our model, we would go over to the predict column here. And from here, we basically have two options. You could either do a quick prediction by just uploading a one-time CSV and getting your predictions, or you could schedule this recurringly to actually set this up in your business. So you could set up your input data source, you could set up your output data source, and then you could set up the schedule. So either with the standard frequency, or you could do this with a cron job, which is really, really cool. Okay, guys, that about wraps it up. Thank you to Pecan for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And check out their amazing tool at the link below. You can get a seven-day free trial here. Have a great day, folks. Bye-bye.